you, you mentioned this analogy, maybe we pick up on this, the water and the waves, right? And sometimes it can feel, if you are watching the mind and you're seeing pizza come, you'll see thoughts come, right? And you can get the understanding thoughts that come and they go and, and then you can investigate what's happening here, where they come from, where they go. And it feels like maybe that um, thoughts are like an energy of, the, of this awareness almost, right? Like the waves, it feels like that. I think people can have this experience, but then I, I feel like when it gets to appearances, maybe a little bit more difficult, right? So uh, how, if we relate thoughts as like energy to awareness, waves to ocean, how should we think about appearances? Similarly, or a little bit different, how, how should we think about appearances in relation to awareness? So in the Mahamuda, First, uh, we try to understand what we call uh, all phenomena are perception of your mind, meaning, for example, you can see image of my hand, of course, through the video now. So, and that is not only in the Mahamuda, in, even in the Abhidharma, what the Abhidharma talk about, the first millisecond, your eyes and hand and they are the consciousness they are meeting. When they meeting, you don't you you haven't seen the hand yet. When you see the hand, the actual image of hand is gone. So you are seeing just kind of like reflection of the hand. So not now scientists also saying the same thing. So that is also with the sound. First millisecond, the sound, ear, and um, consciousness are meeting. That time you don't hear yet. When you hear, the sound is already passed because sound is impermanent. So, so that case, what you're seeing is mental, is the image in your mind. What you're hearing also image. What you're smelling is image. Tasting also same. Feeling is same. Thought of course, emotion of course, is just mind. So that means for you, entire universe, you have to go through your own mind, sensed by your mind, recognized by your mind. So that is the first step, what, what we try to understand. All these are the manifestation of the mind. But we are not saying there is hen outside of your mind or not. At the beginning, yes, there is a real hen outside of your mind, of course. <laughs> that is reflecting the image in your mind. But the next step, what when we talk about the emptiness, we examine that hand. So when we look at the hand, we only can see the pieces of hand. We cannot see entire hand at the same time. Intellect, conceptually, yes, we make it solidified. But when you really look at it, we're scanning, our eyes scan, our mind is scanning, just pieces. So the hand has so many pieces. Each pieces are not the full hand, part of the hand. And when we go into that more deeper, deeper, deeper level, become particle, the atoms. And the atom has sub-atomic particle, then another sub-atom, in the end, lose meaning. So atom become energy, space, time, and energy also lose meaning in the end. So we cannot find any basis, time lose meaning, particle lose meaning, energy lose meaning. So that is empty. So then the hand has to be based on something like table, based on four legs, cover, and each of these are not exist how you can have table. When we say forest, individual trees has to be exist. Without individual trees, how you can have forests. Same analogy, no base. But of course, emptiness doesn't mean nothing. Because of no base, it doesn't have inher inherent existence, everything can manifest. Everything is possible, potential, manifestation. So what we call emptiness equal to fullness. So therefore, Buddha said, form is emptiness, but not just form is emptiness. Emptiness also form, and form is not different than emptiness. 
emptiness is not different than form. So it's become like dream pizza. You can see dream pizza, you can explain dream pizza, but it's not real pizza. It is not really pizza, but appear as exactly like pizza. So, so that case, now, everything is a manifestation of your own mind. 